This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need an amazing blog, gallery, or an online store, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for an awesome online presence and to build and run your business. Hope you guys are doing pretty well. I'm actually packing up to uh, head down to South Florida for a little bit. And if you're anything like me, you either travel a lot or maybe you have to edit off of a laptop or have multiple computers. These are things you probably face and you probably have a couple different problems. So mine are like, how do I stay editing very quickly and reliably with backup when I'm on the road and just have a laptop like this with limited hard drive space and I'm shooting four video and all this kind of stuff. The second is, um, what happens when I get back? How do I get all of this information maybe onto my desktop computer? How do I organize this on my bigger hard drives? And then the third is, let's say I get stuck in an airport and I want to edit some past project or I have a client call up for a past picture or I need my logos or my music or all my files and transitions on the road. How do I keep it all organized across any amount of computers that I have? And maybe it's just me, but I've had two hard drives go bad this month alone. So I've been really batting a hundred on this one, but all of my stuff is safe. And if I didn't have this workflow in place and these tools in place, I probably would have been screwed. So here is the optimum workflow and gear that you need to keep yourself organized when you're traveling and when you're editing on the road. Um, this is mostly for the photo side. If you want, I'll do a video on the video side of things. Hit a like for me and let me know if you wanna see that as well. And here are all the tips that you need to get started. So the first thing you're gonna need is some storage tools. There are three main things that I need and the two that I travel with are going to be this. You need a working drive. A working drive needs to be fast. It needs to be tiny because it needs to travel with you everywhere you go and it needs to be ideally pretty rugged so like drop resistant and water resistant or anything like that. I use these Samsung T5s. I absolutely love them. They are fast as hell. They work great even for 4K video on the road. So these are amazing to get. None of this stuff is sponsored by the way. So these are just the tools that I use that have been working so amazingly well for me. The second thing you're gonna need is some kind of backup. Now, this doesn't need to be as portable. You don't need to have it with you maybe at all times, but you're gonna want it before you wipe out a card. You wanna make sure your stuff is backed up at least. I use these WD Drive, but Lacy makes a bunch of really cool ones that I highly recommend. You can either get them ruggedized if you want something that will go with you anywhere. They're a little bit larger or you can just get a regular one uh, like what I have. These are not rugged because I'm only really dumping to this when I clear cards out. So this is my backup drive right here. These don't need to be as fast. If you can do it and you have the budget for a really fast drive, go for it. Ideally, these would be in two separate locations too. So if I'm traveling with this one on me at all times, this one's gonna stay back at the hotel to keep safe in case my car gets robbed or anything like that. So the last piece of gear that I use, and when I started using this, it was like just a mind blown experience on what this offered. It revolutionized everything for me. I should get paid for talking about this kind of crap because it like it did so much for me. And that is a NAS drive or a network attached storage drive. And um, this is actually my old one right here. I'm now using a Synology 1019 plus um, five bays in there. I've got about 50 terabytes inside of this, but there are a couple reasons that you're going to want this. Um, the first one is that multiple drives allows for redundancy. So I know that if any one of my drives goes and one of my drives just went, Oh, last week, all my other data is pushed onto all the hard drives so that there's always a duplicate. So I just pop out that bad drive, I sent it back, I got a warranty replacement, put the new one back in, all of it kind of reorganized itself onto the drives and I never lost anything. I never went down for more than a second. It was just fine. I had to pull out a drive, put it back in, hot swappable, super, super easy. The other reason is that because this is network attached, it means that all of my computers are all the time backing up to this drive. So my desktop, my laptops, either wirelessly or wired can be backing up to this drive. And then it means that I can actually access any file from this drive, from any device in the entire world, doesn't even have to be my computer, it can just be any computer or my phone. I can quickly pull a picture from the desktop, a logo, anything like that. So I never have to worry if I accidentally left like a music file I wanted or a picture for a client. It's always on this drive and I can access it anywhere. So this is actually crucial. Um, I'll throw kind of a more budget friendly option out there, but I highly recommend these. They are amazing and they just revolutionize what I could do. So now it's time to put this into action, talk about the workflow, but first, 
Shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I'm sure you guys need a website or maybe your website just needs a little bit of sprucing up. Head to squarespace.com. Check out what they have to offer. I mean, you guys already know they have a ton of awesome templates that make it crazy easy to get your site on the way, even in a matter of minutes, but check this out. You don't even need custom graphics or product shots to get started. So I wanna add a picture for my camera guides right on the front page so I can just click a little image search, type in camera, and bam, I have all of these amazing images I can use as the thumbnail. But maybe you've got a food blog, no problem. Squarespace has you covered there. And check this out, I can actually go in here, change my photo settings, maybe go black and white, control my crops, custom filters, everything that I need. So now I can add products to sell for an online storefront, create some awesome galleries, which I can even password protect from my clients and have my latest Instagram images imported right to the gallery or even post automatically to the website homepage. Just go set it up. It's 100% free to try out. It's no credit card required. Just use the coupon code learning cameras and you'll get 10% off and go live with your new site today. So now that we have our hardware on the way, pull out the computer because this is what we're gonna need to do right here. Okay, first thing you need to do, go sign up for a cloud storage. And if you already have a cloud storage but you're using it for like personal stuff, maybe consider getting a new one. The last thing we wanna do is be waiting on our files to sync because you know our kid's soccer game is uh, backing up some photos or you're, you accidentally left your phone recording an hour long video and you're waiting for that to back up. So I highly recommend separating your personal from uh, your work and so I use Dropbox, but uh, there's a ton of services out there that you guys can use. Go ahead and go into Lightroom and turn on Smart Previews. If you are not familiar with this, this is a huge tool. It uh, basically allows you to edit a RAW file as if you were editing a RAW file without actually having the RAW file on your computer. So this is very important because a RAW file can sometimes be 50 to 100 megs each and you could never be able to store, I could never store all of that on my computer and I might not have some of these drives with me and wanna worry about having them all hooked up. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is create smart previews for all of these files. That's going to allow us to edit all of our raw files. These files take up about two megs, so I have no problem storing those in an online Dropbox folder. Two megs a picture is nothing. And then that is going to allow us to do some tremendous stuff, which I'm gonna show you in a second. Now, anytime that I have a shoot, what you're gonna do is take Take your raw files, copy them from your card to that Samsung T5 or whatever your working storage is. Once those raw files are in there, we're going to import them into Lightroom. Now we're just gonna add them to our Lightroom catalog. We're not gonna move them at all. We want them to live onto this drive, but we are going to make sure that we select Smart Preview. So if that is checked, boom, Go ahead and start that import. Now all of these are gonna go really quickly now because we're not actually moving the files. We've already put them on this disk. And then before we delete that card, make sure you back them up onto this drive as well. Now here's a quick secret for you guys while you're doing that. Um, if you have a slower computer, here's what you need to do. Go ahead and pop into your preferences. Under the performance tab, go ahead and check use smart previews instead of raw images for editing. This is going to dramatically speed things up because instead of looking for these raw files on your T5 or whatever you're using, it is going to use those two megabyte raw files that are stored locally on your computer or, or not raw files, but smart previews that are stored locally on your computer. Those are gonna edit so much faster. And the only downside really is that if you're shooting with super high resolution cameras like 24 megapixels and up, you'll notice that you won't be able to zoom in quite as much without quality loss because um, I think the smart previews are about 2,500 pixels. Now the raw file still exists, so don't worry, we're not losing any of that. But if you're editing based on the smart previews, they are going to be smaller resolution. But if you have a slow computer, that is going to dramatically speed things up. So now we're gonna just edit like normal off of our laptop. Uh, if you wanna edit later on a desktop, no problem. Those files are all gonna be synced. I can pull open that catalog on any computer, edit them. Even if I don't have this attached with the raw files, the smart previews are gonna allow me to edit them whenever I want to export or get the full resolution files out. 
I just plug in my T5 into whatever computer. Those files will now sync up. So now I have my raw files connected. Lightroom will see them. And now I'll be able to export the full resolution files. So the last line of defense is gonna be the Synology drive. And what that's gonna do is that every file from this computer is gonna be automatically backed up to this. I can also set these drives to back up to here. And that also means that I can access any file from any past project if it wasn't on any of these drives and I need the raw file, I can always access it here. So hopefully this helps you guys stay backed up. Appreciate you guys hitting like. Again, I'll be hanging out in the comments if you have any questions on this workflow or gear I can help you out with. Hit me up on Learning Cameras at uh, social media, Instagram, Facebook, whatever you guys want, Twitter, I'm there as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you soon in a new video.